What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. I got a tweet from a viewer who saw Invest Answers' recent video on how to optimally dollar cost average Bitcoin. In the video, Invest Answers shows his DCA on steroids strategy, and he shows that that strategy actually beats regular dollar cost averaging by 20%. He mentions that it's quote, a lot of work and a lot of timing to execute this strategy. So I thought today I would get rid of all of that difficult work and timing by fully automating the strategy for you guys. So if you watch the end of the video, we'll quickly cover what his strategy was. Next, I'll show you where we're getting our data from. And then I'll show you how to fully automate this strategy, even if you have no programming experience. And by the end of the video, you should have a fully automated dollar cost averaging strategy that can just sit in the background and run for as long as you want it to. YouTube tells me that a lot of you guys that are watching my channel are also watching Invest Answers channel. So I thought this would be a really cool video to automate for you guys because of how much overlap our channels have. Definitely go down below and subscribe if you're new here. And then also share this video with Invest Answers so that he can automate his own strategy for himself. Go down below and smash the like button for 20% more Bitcoin and let's level up your brains. Invest answer strategy is similar to the fear and greed index video that I did a few months ago that I'll link to up in the cards. But his strategy, instead of relying on the fear and greed index, is relying on the percent drop from the all time high that Bitcoin is currently trading at. The strategy assumes that you're buying $100 of Bitcoin per week on Mondays. But if you wanted to buy $10 a week, or $20 a week, or $50 a week, or $1,000 a week, I'll show you how to do all of that in this video as well so that you can get a custom strategy that's tailored to the amount of money that you want to spend. So he's buying buying some X amount per week on Mondays, but he's also only buying if the Bitcoin price is currently X percent away from the all time highs. And he's buying more Bitcoin the further away from the all time highs that the price gets. This graph here shows you how he's stacking his cash and when he's determining when he should make a buy. The blue at the bottom is just a static $100 per week of dollar cost averaging. And then the green and yellow are his dollar cost averaging on steroid strategy. The green is basically his cash on hand and the yellow is showing when he's making a buy and how big that buy is. So when there's no yellow, he's holding onto the cash and the cash on hand is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because he's not making a buy in those weeks. And then the cash gets deployed and the green bar is stepping down. And the depth of how far that green bar goes down depends on how far away from the all-time high the Bitcoin price is currently trading at. And then as he continues to see these buying opportunities, he eventually exhausts all of his cash down to zero and it starts to rebuild from there. And you can see here from this graph how exactly he's determining to deploy his cash and how much he is deploying. So until Bitcoin Bitcoin gets between 35 and 40% from its all time high, he's not deploying any cash. When he's between 35 and 40%, he's deploying $166 per week, which is 1.66 times the normal buy of $100 per week. Putting normal in quotes there because that $100 per week buy never actually happens. It's just the amount that you're feeding into the strategy. Between 40 and 45% away from the all time high, he's deploying $264 per week. Between 45 and 50%, he deploys $400. $26 per week, which is a lot. It's 4.26 times the normal buy of $100. And then finally, between 50 and 57%, he's deploying $200 per week. His model only goes up to 57%. And so I'm going to assume for the purposes of writing this code that if anything is above 57%, we're still only going to be investing $200. Invest answers if you're watching and you want to leave a comment, I'll definitely pin it down below if you want to give us some update on what we should do if it ever reaches above 57% away from all time highs. So basically, Basically, all we need to do now is get live data about how far away the Bitcoin spot price is from the all time highs. And then we'll apply that relevant factor that we just talked about to the amount that we're purchasing. So next, let's check out how we're actually going to pull down that all time high data. All right, guys. So here we're going to head over to Glassnode and we're going to see this price drawdown from all time high chart here. And you can see here up at the top, this is a T1 indicator. And all T1 means is that this is a free chart actually with a Glassnode account. If we come up here and click on upgrade our plan, we're actually going to see that, you know, we get all T1 data up to 24 hours. And since we're only running this script once a week, 24 hours of data is going to be good enough for our use case. So if you guys don't have an account already on Glassnode, it is again free to sign up for this. So I'll leave a link for it down in the description. You can see this graph basically is showing us in red at each slice of time, how far away is the price from the all time high. So you can see here, you know, at the most recent all time high, it should be 0%. And that's exactly what 
what happened. And then as we, you know, continue to lower our price and lower our price and lower our price here, we're getting further and further and further from the all time high where today, you know, we're about 58% from the all time high. So what I've done is I've implemented a script here that basically is going to pull all of that data into code for us. And so we can see that at each time value, we're getting a distance from all time high. And so then if I massage that data a little bit, I can run it and get exactly the data from today of how far we are from the all time high. And you can see that today's data is 56.8%. And so then all I had to say was, okay, if we start to feed in different percentages from all time high, how is that going to change our buy factor in alignment with invest answers video? And so these numbers are exactly what we just talked about that invest answers covered in his video. And if you haven't seen that original video, I'll link it down in the description for you to check out exactly what he's saying for yourself. Now that we understand the logic behind how this script is working, next I'm going to go to a page where I've hosted all of this code that you can just copy and paste for yourself. All right, guys. So the first thing that we're going to do here is you're going to go down below and click the link to this Notion page that's hosting all these different Gemini API AWS functions that I've written. I personally use Gemini because at one point they did have the lowest fees of any exchange and their fees are still pretty competitive when you buy using the API. They're 0.2% for make or buy orders. So I'm personally still using Gemini. You might use Coinbase Pro or Binance or Kraken or something else. And I hope to have code out in the future that shows you how to buy and sell using all of those other exchanges. But for now, all I've got done is Gemini and Coinbase Pro. So if you want to implement this right now, you're going to have to use Gemini. Unless, of course, you already know how to code, in which case, you know, why are you even listening to me? So the first thing we're going to do here is click on this Gemini layer.zip and save this on our desktops. This Gemini layer.zip basically allows us to access the Gemini API Python library up in the AWS cloud environment, which is going to be important for how we automate our script in the future. And if you don't trust my Gemini layer.zip, you can go to this link down below and follow the exact steps that I use to generate mine to generate your own. Next, we're going to head over to console.aws.amazon.com. And if you guys are unfamiliar with AWS, I'll leave a link up in the cards to a video that I did on how we use AWS here on this channel. It includes what AWS is, how to sign up for it, and then why what we're using AWS for on this channel is going to be 100% free for anyone that wants to use it. So the first thing we're going to do here on AWS is we're going to click on Lambda, or if you haven't recently visited it, you can come up to the search and just search for Lambda. Click on that here. You're going to come over here on the left hand side of the screen and click on layers. You're going to click on create layer up here in the top. We'll call this layer Gemini API layer. Come click down here on x86.64 and change the runtime to Python 3.8 and then we'll click on upload. We'll upload that Gemini layer.zip that we just downloaded and we'll hit create. And I'm gonna change this to YouTube demo. All right, so once that layer has been created, we're gonna click back up here to Lambda. Once we're on Lambda, we're gonna click over here on functions and we're gonna click on create function up here in the top right. We're gonna author the function from scratch and we're gonna call this BTC DCA on steroids invest answers. We're gonna change the runtime down here to Python 3.8 and then we'll scroll down and click on create function. It's gonna come up with this screen for our Lambda function. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to find add a layer down here. We're going to click on custom layers and then pick that layer that we just created. Mine was called Gemini API layer YouTube demo. And we're going to bring version one in here and we're going to click on add. All right. Now all we have to do is copy and paste the code that I've already written for you into this little dialog box here. So let's delete everything that's in there and then go back to our Gemini API functions in Notion. And we'll do a control F for invest answers, DCA, steroids, all time high script, copy this whole thing, going to do control C and then head back here to Lambda and control V. And the first thing you'll notice here is that it says changes not deployed. So every time that we make a change to this function, we're going to have to click the deploy button for AWS to have the latest code up in the cloud. So let's go ahead and click deploy so that AWS has all of these changes. You'll see that the function is updating and you'll see that it's successfully updated. So now the only things we have to do are fill in our API keys for Gemini and our API keys for glass node. So let's go ahead and do Gemini first. You're going to come over to Gemini and you're going to log in. You should see something like this. So you'll click up on account and then you'll click on settings. You can scroll down on the left and you'll see API programmatic access. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to click on create API key. We'll enter our two factor authentication code here. We'll select primary from scope. We'll hit next. We'll change the name of this API key to invest answers YouTube demo. Take this API key and we'll copy it. We'll come back to our script in AWS. 
us and we'll paste this under Gemini public key. It should start with account. Come back into Gemini and we'll copy the secret key here and we'll put this back in our AWS under Gemini private key. We'll come back to Gemini and we'll give this the trading permission. We don't need to give it fund management because this key is only going to be for trading within Gemini, so buying and selling. We'll acknowledge that we've copied and pasted our API key to a safe place and that we can't access it again. It is really important that you don't show these keys to anyone else. I'm only showing them here because this is a demo and I'm going to delete them directly after I make this video. If someone does know your API keys, they're going to be able to trade on your behalf and that's a really big security vulnerability, so please don't share your API keys with anyone. That being said, gonna come down here and click on create API key. We'll see that it's been created and that it has the trading permission. If you do ever lose your API keys, you can always come down here, click on delete, delete your API keys, and then just come up in here and generate new ones. And then obviously you'll have to go into your Lambda function and put the new API keys into the Lambda function in the exact same way that we just did it. So that's it for Gemini. This script is now hooked up to your Gemini account. Next, let's go ahead and get some Glassnode API keys so that we can pull down that from all time high data from Glassnode. All we're gonna do here is log into Glassnode and then come up on the top right and click on API. This is gonna take you to studio.glassnode.com slash settings slash API. I've already generated an API key here, but let's generate a new one. Just gonna click on generate. Generating a new API key will disable your current key. Do you want to continue? So if you already have one, you can just generate a new one this way, but it will invalidate your old one. So let's go ahead and generate a new key just so that I can show you guys how this works. So now we have a new key. We're gonna click on this copy button here. We're gonna come back over to our AWS function and we're gonna just paste these API keys here for Glassnode. And then because we made a change again, we're gonna hit deploy. So now we can see our function has been updated and now we're ready to test our function. Before we test our function, let's just run through the script and see how it works. The important information here is this buy amount. By default, I'm gonna make it $100 because that's what Invest Answers talked about in his video. But just for the sake of this video and the sake of testing, I'm gonna make our buy amounts $10 so that they're just a little bit smaller and we can place a bunch of them and see how it works. Next, we can see this set buy factor function that we talked about earlier. This is basically determining when you're between certain bands, how much more Bitcoin are you going to buy? And then down here, this buy crypto function is just going to buy however much Bitcoin you decided to buy up here times whatever this factor is basically. And what's unique about this script is that you could actually change the symbol if you wanted to like ETH USD and you could change the glass node token to ETH and it would give you ETH distance from all time high, and it would give you the ability to purchase ETH from Gemini. That's why this is called buy crypto down here and not buy Bitcoin. But for now, let's leave it how it is on Bitcoin because Invest Answers video was not about Ethereum. It was specifically about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin markets. So we can see that because Glassnode was giving us 58% from an all time high, we should be getting a buy factor of two and we should be getting a buy amount of 10. So 10 times two, we should be getting about a $20 order from Gemini. So let's go ahead and deploy this code. We'll click up on test here, this big orange button, and we'll just call our test test. We'll scroll down and hit save. And now we'll test our function. This should actually be buying $20 of Bitcoin on Gemini. So if you don't want to do that, or if you have it set to 100 and you don't want to do that, then don't click test yet. So we'll click test. We'll see the buy factor was two. And if we jump over to Gemini, we'll see that a $19.96 buy order was placed. It's not exactly $20 because there's going to be four cents of fees and that's going to take you up to $20. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this for now. And then I'm going to show you what would happen if we changed the distance from all time high to some different number just to prove to you that it works. So I'm going to hard code this distance from all time high value here to 0.47, which should be 4.26 times our buy amount because 0.47 is between 0.45 and 0.5. So I'm going to come up here and hit deploy. You shouldn't do this again. You should leave it how it was, but this is just to prove to you that the number does change. So now if we hit test and we come over to Gemini, we should see a four $42.51 buy for slightly lower than the spot price. So the current spot price is $29,754 and our limit order was set for $29,724. So the buy hasn't executed yet, but I've been running this strategy just dollar cost averaging basically every day for a couple of years now. And usually my limit orders get filled either immediately or within a couple of hours. So I'm gonna come here and hit cancel and I'm gonna go back to AWS and I'm gonna change our function back to distance from all time high. That was just proving to you again that, you know, we multiplied our $10 buy times 4.26 there. It is a limit order so that we can get lower fees. And then with that fee inclusion, it should be rounding our buy up to the total amount that we actually wanted to purchase. So in the $20 example, it was actually a $19.96 buy plus four cents of fees. So now that we've seen that the script works and it's actually 
making the buys over on Gemini. Let's see how now we can automate the script to run every Monday, just like Invest Answers was talking about. All we're gonna do to automate this buy is come up here to the search bar in AWS and we're gonna look for Event Bridge. So Amazon Event Bridge. Once you come to Amazon Event Bridge, you can look at your existing rules by coming over here to Rules on the left, or you can click this big orange Create a New Rule button to create a new rule. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this rule Invest Answers Monday Bitcoin Buys and give it a description. And then we'll click over here on Schedule and we'll click Next. You actually can't have spaces, so I'm gonna make underscores here. Next. Now we're going to have to create a cron expression for every Monday, and you can actually set it to run at whatever minutes and hours you want. Let's say we want it to run on the 10th minute of the fifth hour. We don't care what day of the month it is. We want it to run every month. We want it to run on Monday, and we want it to run on every year. And so when you've written something like this correctly, and I'll leave this one down in the description so that you can play with the hours and minutes and do this exact same thing every Monday for yourself. When you write it correctly, you'll see the next 10 trigger dates in either GMT or your local time zone. I'm going to leave it as GMT, but you could do whatever you want again with this. And we'll see the next 10 trigger dates are June 6th, which is a Monday, June 13th, which is a Monday, June 20th, June 27th, July 4th, July 11th, July 18th, et cetera, et cetera. So this is running every single Monday at 5, 10 a.m. GMT. And again, if you change this 5, 10, let's say it was 5, 50, you should see that the time here updates if you have written something that is correct. And I'll leave some other common cron expressions down in the description as well if you do want to play around with this. But now that we've gotten something that lines up with what Invest Answers was talking about, let's go ahead and click Next. And then we'll click on Select a Target here, and we're going to select a Lambda function, and we're going to select the function that we just wrote. And so mine, I think, was called Bitcoin Dollar Cost Average on Steroids Invest Answers. Yours will be called whatever you called yours. And then we'll go ahead and hit Next. You can give it a tag if you want. Maybe if you were doing a lot of these like me, you might want to add a tag called like Bitcoin or something, but I'm not going to do that for now. This is optional. So let's hit Next. Review and Create here. We can come down to the bottom and just click on Create Rule. And so that's it. Now that script is going to run every Monday at, I think mine was like five in the morning or something GMT. And that's really all you have to do. Now that script that we just tested and we saw created limit orders over on Gemini for about the spot price of Bitcoin is going to run every Monday at that time, whatever you have specified in here. Invest Answers talked about this strategy in his video as working really well during neutral and bear markets. So when we enter a bull market again, and you maybe want to disable the strategy, it's really easy for you to do that. All you're going to do is search up event bridge in the search bar on AWS like we did earlier. You're going to click over on rules on the left hand side and it's going to bring you to this screen. You'll identify your automation rule that we just built. This one in my case is called invest answers Monday Bitcoin buys. You can click on it here, just highlight it and then just click on disable. You can hit disable there and now you can see that this invest answers Monday Bitcoin buys is fully disabled and that's all you have to do to turn this on and off. If you ever wanted to turn it on again, you would simply click on it again and click on enable and then enable it. I'm going to disable it for now because I'm not going to be running this. In bull markets, Invest Answer says that a straight old dollar cost averaging strategy would outperform this. And so if you are interested in automating your normal dollar cost averaging strategy, I'll leave a link to other videos that I've done on this topic, basically the exact same steps that we just took here, but with different scripts. And so whenever you thought you were in a bear market or a bull market, you could just come in here. And for example, like I have one that buys a 5% dip of the current value of Bitcoin every day. If I thought that that would work better in a bull market, I could click on that and disable it and enable this bear market strategy. And then I could switch back and forth with them whenever I thought that I was in a bull market or a bear market. So really this AWS infrastructure is going to allow you to implement whatever automated trading strategies that you can build basically. And I have a lot of other ones on that Notion page. So feel free to jump around on these different scripts and on the playlist for the different Gemini API scripts that I have written on this channel. Comment down below if you're someone that watches my channel and Invest Answers channel. I'm really interested to see what the overlap is there. And then let me know if you think that this strategy is worthwhile and if you're going to implement this for yourself. Let's share this video on Twitter with Invest Answers so that he can actually automate his own strategy. I left his Twitter handle down below, so please go tweet the video at him. I think it will be really interesting to see if he does respond to the video. Go down below and like the video if you learned something and come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. Goodbye.